I'll be working with this Ankara print for this tutorial is a leftover from my previous project and I'll be drafting on the black cotton fabric because of the color of my chalk. This line will serve as my shoulder line and on this line I will place half of the shoulder of 4.5 inches and from that point I will go down 5.5 inches for the armhole level and I'll square out these points. With my tape on the shoulder line, I will go down 10 inches for the half length and I'll square out the point. With my tape still on the shoulder line, I will come down 3.5 inches for the neck depth. Then on this line, I will place half of the chest measurement of 3 inches and I'll draw in the armhole curve. On the armhole or bust level, I will place one fourth of the bust measurement for me is 5 inches plus 0.25 inch for ease. I will place this same measurement on the waistline without any ease and draw in the side seam. From the side seam, I went out again by 1.5 inches to cover up the side. We can go out by 2 inches and I reshape the armhole. On the waistline at the center front, I came down by 0.25 inch for stomach ease and I connected it back to the waistline. From the extended line from the side seam, I marked my loops. So I marked 5 of these. So here it's up to you to decide how you want to space your loops. So that's all I did for the front pattern. I'll go ahead and add half inch seam allowance all the way around and cut out the pattern. And I'll be cutting 2 pieces of this. This line here is the waistline and this other line is the side seam of the front trouser. Then from the waistline to this line at the bottom is the length of the trouser and I've left some space here about 2 inches for the back pattern. With my tape on the waistline, I'll come down 9 inches for the crotch depth and I'll square out this point. On the waistline, I will place one fourth of the waist circumference plus extra 3 inches. For me, it's 8 inches. I will place the same measurement on the crotch line and connect with a straight line. On the crotch line, I will go up by 2 inches for my front crotch extension and draw in the front crotch curve. I got this measurement by dividing the 8 inches by 4. I will measure the total of what I have on the crotch line and divide that into 2. I will place that measurement at the hem of the trouser and connect with a broken line. This line is the green line and this line will help us to shape the leg of the trouser. With my tape on the crotch line, I took my knee level measurement and make a point there. Then with my tape on that point, I will place half of my knee circumference of 8 inches. So I'm placing 4 inches on both sides of this line and I'll place the same measurement at the hem of the trouser and draw in my side seam and the end seam of the trouser. So guys, this was all I did for the front pattern. I'll be drafting the back pattern right on this same fabric. So on the crotch line for the back crotch extension, I went out by an extra 1 inch. Then on the center front line for the back center line, I went up by 1 inch for the back rise. Then on the waistline, I came out by 1 inch on the side and drew in the back waistline. I took this 1 inch all the way down to the hem of the trouser following the side seam of the front and connected the point. On the waistline of the back, I came in by 0.25 inch and drew in the back center line and the back crotch line. Then I took that one inch all the way down to the hem of the trouser and drew in the back inseam. The back panel has an elastic on the waistline. So from the waistline of the back, I will go up by one and a half inches for the elastic channel. With my tape on the waistline, I came down at one and a half inches for the installation of my pocket and the pocket opening measured 3.75 inches. Before we cut out the pattern, we are going to verify if the crotch circumference on the pattern matches with what we are working with. The crotch circumference I'm working with is 21 inches. So here on the pattern on the front panel, I have 10 inches. 
I'm going to place this 10 inches on the back crotch extension and measure up to the waistline without the elastic included and here I have 21.75 inches which is perfect so I'll go ahead and cut out this pattern I've cut out the pattern I will cut two pieces of the front panel then I'll cut the back panel of the trouser first and I'll add my seam allowance as I cut along trim off the pattern of the back panel and then cut out the front panel you can also do your pattern separately so guys these are all the pieces cut out I have the back panel of the trouser the front panel of the trouser the two pieces for the half length one will serve as the lining I have an elastic here for the back waistband then these pair of ropes that I've prepared for the strap and for the loops as well the only thing that is not here is the pocket I'll go ahead and assemble the half length piece I'll start by pinning the my strap in place and the loops as well I have also cut out my loops. The length of my loops measured 2.75 inches and after I attached it on the body measured 0.75 inches. Once I get everything pinned and in place, I will take it to my sewing machine and secure it with a straight stitch. Once the loops are secured, I will go ahead and turn it out with the lining. So guys, I've put them together and this is what it's looking like. I have turned out the main fabric with the lining and this is what we have. The next step is to run a top stitch on the neckline, armhole and on both sides of the loops to secure it. So once you get to this point before you do the top stitch, at that one and a half inches we went out from the side seam of the bodies, you will so close the seam allowance at the waistline up to that one and a half inches point. So I went back and opened up my seams. So once I had my stitches open, all I did was to face the right side of the lining to the right side of the bodies and run my stitches just along the seam allowance of that one and a half inches point. Then I made a notch at that point to separate it from the seam allowance of the waistline so that it can relax. I turned it out and this is what it looks like then I went back and ran my top stitch along the loops and stitch closed the waistline of the bodies so guys we've completed the upper part of this jumpsuit and I just decided to loop in the rope for you to see what it looks like you can do whatever style you like on the back you can do crisscross and you can tell the top is already looking good so we'll move on to the lower part of the jumpsuit which is the trouser I've cut out the pocket pieces for the trouser I'll go ahead and assemble the front panel and attach the pockets From the waistline I came down at 2 inches and pinned my pocket Remember we have a half inch seam allowance on the waistline to join to the bodies so that when I'm done attaching my pocket the distance from the waistline to the beginning of my pocket will be 2 inches so guys I'm done with the pocket the next thing I'm going to do is to attach the bodies to the trouser remember our front half with circumference measured 10 inches and on our trouser measured 16 inches so we are going to pleat in the excess to correspond with the waist circumference of the front bodies plus 1 inch joining allowance so the total excess I have on the front panel is 6 inches so I'm going to pleat 3 inches on each side of the trouser and I'm doing 2 pleats so from the center front of the trouser on both sides I went out by 2 inches and did my first pleat of 1.5 inches then I went out again by 1 inch and did my second pleat of 1.5 inches I already added joining allowance on my trouser while I was cutting out the pattern 
so guys i've done my pleats i'm just reconfirming the measurement to make sure everything is intact before i go ahead and run back tacks on them to secure it now that everything is intact i will go ahead and attach the bodies to the trouser with a straight stitch and overlock the raw edges So guys, I've attached the two panels together and this is the front panel of the jumpsuit all done and dusted. Now we'll move on to the back panel. I'll go ahead and stitch close the center back of the trouser, attach the pocket and sew the channel for the elastic. So guys, I've done all that I said. I'll go ahead and insert my elastic. The length of the elastic is 9.5 inches and this includes joining allowance. The width of the elastic is 0.9 inch. I'll go ahead and attach the elastic and secure them on the sides of the trouser. So guys, the back panel is ready. We'll go ahead and attach it to the front panel. So we are going to sew from the waistline round the pocket down to the hem of the trouser and on the inseam as well. So guys, I've done all that I said and this jumpsuit is almost ready. The only thing remaining now is to hem the trouser and overlock the raw edges. Initially, I wanted to leave the leg of the trouser palazzo like this, but somehow I pleated it in and it came out even more cute. So, whichever way you prefer, you just go for it. So, for the pleats, what I did was the back panel is wider than the front. So, from the side seam on both sides, I came in by 2 inches and did my first pleat. Then, in the middle, the distance between these pleats is 1 inch. Then on the front, I came in by one and a half inches on both sides of the seam and did my pleats and the distance between the pleats is one inch. So the total circumference of the ankle became nine inches and then I ran back tacks to secure the pleat. So that's it for me guys. If you find it helpful and if you enjoyed the tutorial, do not forget to like, share, comment, leave all your questions in the comment section. And do let me know if you like more kiddies on this channel so that I can keep making more videos. And until my next one, a bientôt!